uh, mute yourself, uh, turn off the video if you don't want to be seen. Um, so that, hang on, I will go on. There you go, um, here we are. So we are on Facebook. Welcome, welcome everybody. Uh, by the way, um, I want to, let me uh, copy the invite here. If you are on Facebook, and uh, but what you want to do is uh, you are looking to be on the uh, Zoom. I am going to one more time share the Zoom link. It's uh, now on a uh, comment here on the Facebook. And so you can look at the first comment here uh, and find the Zoom um, uh, link to join us. Welcome everybody. This is me, Dr. Shalon Shachaf, and you are now um, joining us for the last day, last event of the first, you know, the well, the last official event of our uh, winter writing challenge in Academic Writers and Block. We do have a bonus session, so you know this is the last. Uh, um, by the way, I'm still okay. I'm admitting a lot of people. Good, uh, Asia. By the way, let me uh, ask you to turn off your camera until we start. Um, or let me just pin myself to the speaker view. Okay, everybody uh, joining us on Facebook, welcome, welcome. There is a link to the Zoom in case you couldn't find it. It's also in the event, um, in all the events I created. So it's one reoccurring, um, uh, reoccurring link. So if um, you can't find it, ah, oh, there you go. Now we have people. So uh, I appreciate your patience, especially those of you who are watching this later. Uh, because I am giving people opportunity to come in and be admitted uh, on the Zoom. All right, friends. So meanwhile, welcome, welcome, everybody. Those of you who are on the Zoom, we already did this, but uh, those of you joining on Facebook, let's start with a little bit of a stretch. There's never too much stretching. So those of you on the Zoom are also welcome to take a deep breath and maybe even do a little bit of a Back bend in your chair with your hand stretch and then a side, a nice side stretch for each side to welcome us to this Friday. And um, Friday is always an interesting day where there's an invitation for us to um, leave behind, you know, the intensity of the week. Um, but there's a little bit more intensity before we can do that, right? So we go on a uh, quick, intense burst sometimes on Friday to be able to make sure that we uh, leave everything behind so we can go on the weekend. At least that's that's what I'm hoping for you. Um, what else did I, I have? Let, let's start. So I have a lot to do today. So announcements first. Uh, the workbook. If you couldn't, um, if you sign up for the workbook and you can see it, it's probably in your spam mail. Let me give you a little bit of a cheat sheet with that. You know, if you go into the Facebook group um, and let me try to do that, I will share now and I'll try to show you if you go on uh, Academic Writers and Block and let me see if it's sharing. Uh, there you go. No, it's not sharing it, of course. <laughs> oh, Zoom, hang on, let me see. Oh yes, it is, it is shared. So you guys are seeing Academic Writers on Block, great. So if you go to the Featured tab uh, and you can see uh, one of the reminders. Um, so let's scroll down here. Uh, all right, so for example here, the, see every time I try to pin it to the top and then it disappears, <laughs> oh Lord. All right, so you can go into uh, even the events or one of the reminders and just look for, here you go. Um, all right, you know, I totally lied. It's not up here. <laughs> it's really annoying. Okay, I'm so sorry, guys, but um, there are the reminders that uh, I, I, I share directly from MailChimp and they have a little box I wanted to show you. But you know what? I'm going to just look for it later because I don't want to waste more time. Um, but uh, you should be able to uh, log in from this page, the one that says join this, the seven day challenge and sign up through here. And then when you submit, it might be going in your spam or your trash um, folder. 
but if it's uh, you can look for it, it will say, you know, have my name, have Academic Writers Unblock, search for it and find, and then when you open it, there's a little blue link box and it says download workbook. It's right above my headshot in that one. So you can download it. And again, if you have more issues with it, let me know. Now you may ask yourself if you're just joining me, why am I still asking you to download the free challenge workbook on Friday, which uh, is the last day of official day of our challenge. So I have extended the time to uh, fill out the workbook and send me the filled out workbook to Monday morning before our bonus session. So Monday we have a bonus session. I do want to also invite you guys to um, let me know if there are more things you want me to cover in the bonus session. Right now, uh, what we're going to be talking about in the bonus session is uh, the academic writing style, how do you hack your uh, research paper, but with an eye out more so to talking about publishing, publication. A lot of you have expressed interest in looking at the publication process, the peer review process, but with that as well, I invite you to go on the group. I will be uh, polling you over the weekend and I will invite you to add your questions because the more specific you are with the questions you ask, the better. All right, friends. So uh, one of the things we always said we were gonna do uh, on our uh, last day of the week was uh, invite you guys to come in and get a little bit of uh, uh, coaching. I do have one person on the Zoom that's a graduate of our um, um, of my workshop. Hang on, I do want to do one more thing. Sorry about uh, everything is going a little crazy here in terms of Zoom not wanting to share my things today, but okay, here we are. All right. So by the way, again, if you're joining this on the Facebook and it's now live, it's 9.46 a.m. Uh, in the East Coast um, and you um, are just joining, feel free to join on the Zoom. If you're just joining on Facebook, uh, there is a link in the comments. I hope I tried to link on the comments, the link for the Zoom. If not, that one I do know is pinned to the top. The, uh, the Zoom link is pinned to the top of the featured tab on the group. Um, and so uh, feel free to jump on the Zoom conversation. I do want to just, uh, Asia is patiently waiting. We're going to do a little bit of one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one coaching real quick. And it's part of it is just to, uh, Asia is a graduate of um, our workshop and also um, uh, we've done uh, and uh, a bunch of coaching one-on-one -on -one is which is part of what also happens in the workshop and so she uh, volunteered to come on and here you go people are jumping in on the zoom great um on this our fifth day of the challenge uh to talk a little bit about her experience working with me and uh also i of course to uh, i will be coaching her a little bit uh, we'll hear i can't wait to hear what uh the state of her book is um and so without further ado, in a, well, not with further ado, just one more thing. Okay, so today we're doing uh, a little bit um, about clarity. We're workshopping the things we've already learned and there's time for uh, question and answers. Um, so that's gonna be, there you go. I'm just stalling a little bit because more people are coming. Um, I just wanna give you a quick reminder of uh, the mindset before we jump in. Uh, I want you to remember that we learned how to deal with uh, our own sense of, of timing. Um, we learned to uh, identify our anxiety protocols, why we become um, anxious, why we become resistant, why we have avoidance, um, and then the practical uh, solutions to teach yourself how to recreate a writing life uh, without judging your needs around your timing, your time and your energy, not trying to fight your own sense of correct timing. And I love this little Jung, Carl Jung um, uh, quote, what, uh, what we do not bring into consciousness appears in our life as fate, as destiny. The way I experience that, you know, in me, in my life and for my, a lot of my clients is that when we don't ask ourselves, you know, when all we know to do is to try to force ourselves with willpower to do the writing that we need to do, 
uh, and we get into an internal conversation that's very conflictual. You know, I told you before, like it's like we were hiring a manager that's a micromanager, you know, uh, because when we write, we are both labor and uh, management. So it appears in our lived reality as a writer's block, right? What doesn't, what you do not bring into consciousness, the reason for, you know, your feelings of inadequacy, that rat race of academia, the toxicity, you know, maybe something is going on in your advising relationship. Maybe you're in an environment that's, you know, abusive. It happens more often than we would like. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of what is going on. Bring that stuff, although it's uncomfortable, you, you, you need to develop a writing practice that takes time to deal with what is your number one tool. And as much as I like pen and paper, those are not your number one tools for writing. Um, and your laptop is not your number one tool for writing. Your number one tool for writing is you, the writer. Okay, so what I even try you know, to instill in you and encourage you to do throughout this week and in the workbook and in all the exercises is a mindfulness mindset. And mindfulness allows you to look inside to try to gain clarity. So after we're going to be talking with uh, our beloved Asia today, we're going to talk a little bit about clarity and how, how to gain clarity. Uh, last announcement, fill out the workbook. I know people are still joining. Fill out the workbook uh, submitted by Monday morning to win either 30 minutes one-on-one uh, -on -one work with me or 50% discount on my foundational workshop. The foundational workshop, guys, it's live. The sales page, the landing page for that, the enrollment page for that is live, it's on the group. I'm happy to answer questions. And by the way, if you're on the Zoom and you wanna stay later to ask me questions about that workshop, I'm happy to do that. It's a seven week workshop. It might stretch to eight depending on, uh, whenever I do a workshop, I let people choose uh, whether they wanna take a week off to do a writing week. Um, will be the recording of yesterday's session be available soon. It, uh, it should be already available. Uh, it's, it's available uh, on Academic Writers and Block as a live, uh, li you know, because I went live on the group, it's on the group, but it's on my, um, um, on my YouTube channel. Uh, and it's on the sister group that's called the Supporting Circle. Uh, I posted the link to the YouTube channel. So uh, let me know if you couldn't find it. Did everybody find it all right? I mean, when I'm scrolling down, I still see it on the, um, we should still be able to see it on the Facebook group. There you go. I see day four live session. So let me show you, this is fun. See, this is me, day four live session. All right, so here we are. It is, it should be available. All the, rec all the recordings and all the lives are available on the Zoom. All right, so yes, the seven week, Workshop is coming. Um, I don't want to talk about this too much right now. We will talk about this later, but um, um, it, it's it's uh, the, the early bird special. You can save $100 right now to, if you want to join on the early bird special. I know that this could still be a lot of money uh, if you have financial need. Never hesitate to contact me and talk to me about payment options, uh, scholarships, um, there are many things we can do fee free ways to pay. So, you know, the way I have it set up is for people to be able to immediately go in and, and buy the workshop, it's a PayPal. So there is a fee included there. So I can waive the fee if you want to talk to me about sending money in a direct. Oh, you found the, okay, great. Susan found a day for recording. Over the weekend, people, I want you to go back if you haven't had the time and, you know, either watch or re-watch the challenge sessions and fill out the workbook and send it to me to get uh, either 50%. I said that already. Okay, I'm repeating myself. Um, but I do want you to also invite your friends because this is an opportunity that happens twice a year. It will stay on the group. All the challenge sessions will stay on the group for two weeks. And after that, I remove them because I, as I'm hearing from you, I know you guys are getting a lot of value from this. I am not very good at holding back. You know, when I do the free events, I treat them just as uh, my paid workshops. I do not show up here to try to be just enticing you to do something else, no. You know, I hope you guys could have seen and appreciated that we are doing the work and 
this is the last thing I want to say before I uh, invite Asia that needs to go somewhere else to talk with me. Uh, I really want you guys to congratulate yourself for taking the time to do this work. This is not easy. This is a deep dive. And I also want to say, look, I've been talking to a lot of people after uh, our sessions and, and, and getting emails and keep them go coming. I love interacting with you guys. Um, I know this can stir up deep things. So I really do hope, and I always say it, and I will say it again, if this is stirring up something, uh, a deep trauma or you know your anxiety or depression, I very much recommend talking to, you know, talking to your friends, but also, you know, talking to a professional, I'm a fan of therapy. It needs to be a good therapist, right? Not all of them, not all therapists are the same, but find that support group. And also the group, Academic Writers and Block, we are here, I am here. Please, um, you know, if this is steering up things for you, uh, don't hesitate. All right. And so now, Asia, would you want to jump on? Uh, I, unmute yourself, and then I think it should, uh, once you start talking, it should, uh, Facebook kind of understands, and, and you introduce yourself a little bit. Eje is uh, one of, I, I, so yesterday we figured out you were in, I think this was the first online uh, because um, version uh, that I've ever taught of my workshop. Before that, I taught it in a local uh, writer's studio, which I really appreciate, the Decatur Writer's Studio, which sadly with COVID disappeared. I don't know if, you know, they're not doing a lot of uh, things, but also we all kind of got used to be on Zoom and it's so convenient. I'm a cave person and I love my cave. So for me to be in my cave and bring you all in, uh, into the, you know, into my own little office space is a fantastic way to do things. So Asia, jump on in and uh, introduce yourself uh, to our community for a minute. Yes. <clears throat> so talking about the Decatur Writer Studio, it was the Chocolate Coffee Shop that I saw your flyer first. Um, yes, and so you're I a saw, local. Um, hang yeah, on, and me, so, uh, um, yeah, go ahead. Not, hang on, let me do a gallery view and that way maybe we can see. Do you guys, uh, can you tell me if you're seen on Facebook, if you're seeing Asia as well? And Asia, maybe, uh, so, so yes, you actually see, this is the serendipity of um, locality. We have people here and I would love for you guys to write in the uh, work, you know, uh, in the chat, in the Zoom, in the Facebook, where you are in the world. Because, you know, it was so funny, Asia, you know, the other day, um, and, and Asia is helping people get their money straight. So we'll talk about this in a minute, but you know, my business, I was just talking to my uh, uh, beloved uh, um, VA, she's not my virtual assistant, she's a VA guru, um, Dr. Monica. <laughs> <laughs> who has this by the way, we will introduce her soon. Uh, and she was, we were talking about the challenge of my business being everywhere. I have people from Hong Kong, from everywhere. But there you have it. Miss Asia here is from Atlanta. And uh, so basically tell everybody what, what was it that you, how did you find me? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> how did I find you? That's a different question. I'll tell you why I went forward to reaching oh, out okay. to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so for that, um, this is an academics writings group, but for me talking about money, although I have an academic background, I went, to, I have an undergrad in accounting, I have a master's in finance, but realizing that as I went forward in my, my professional and corporate career as a financial analyst, having the technical knowledge of how to understand finances, I realized that my personal finances still didn't reflect the knowledge that I knew. And so that sent me on this journey of understanding what is this wealth mentality? How do you actually translate the knowledge of what to do with your money into action, into your day-to-day -day life? And so for me, through that three-year journey of you know, working with mentors, going to workshops, the common denominator that I found was it's all about your mindset. And I know that's, you know, every, they, every, they can say everything start with, start, starts with your mindset but specifically with the money, because our decisions around finances and how we spend and relate to money, a lot of it has to do with how we were raised, the things that we heard growing up from our parents about money, the way we see society interact and engage and talk about money. And it's almost, you know, excuse me, it's almost a mind fuck to realize that Please. majority of- <laughs> that majority I don't want to be society, the only one cussing. <laughs> It's crazy that the majority of society still teaches these certain principles and ways to deal with money, but they don't actually translate into what we're seeing, how people want to handle, deal with their money and build wealth. And so I'll be able to share more about the quantum wealth theory. That's the name of the book. 
but back to why, you know, I reached out to Dr. Sharon. And the reason why is because talking about this psychological or subconscious dealings with money, I had to bring in some technical knowledge or technical topics to write in, but I also had to make sure that I communicated in a way that people weren't turned off by another finance book, that they actually would receive the information, that they were engaged to come back to it, that they would actually interact with the book along the process, because it's not something you just read once, okay, I know it, now I can do better. Like It's truly an ongoing reconditioning process to deal with these money matters. This is so, so, oh my God, Asia, I got to stop you for a minute. It's just, this is so incredible. A couple of things that I just want to, you know, bring up that I think are shared. Like, first of all, everybody, Asia and people like Asia who joined my workshop really inspired me to explore working with a lot of my academic clients on books that are more widely, you know, wider audience reaching. Asia, I just want to highlight one more thing for people who may not get how awesome what you're doing is. Um, I read, in, you know, we were uh, emailing yesterday and there was a sentence in your email and, and with this, I'm going into one of my skills, which is to help you notice when you did something awesome in your writing. There was one sentence you wrote there that I was like, oh my God, that's the book blurb, you know? And I'm pretty good at finding those like, wait, wait a minute, this is the thing. You said, it was so beautiful. You said, you know, uh, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, you know, you said, I went to school, I got an education. I learned, you know, I thought I was gonna get, you know, the education to understand finances, but it wasn't until I had, um, a, a back injury, right? Or, you know, Achilles like, tendon injury. Achilles, Achilles, not the back, right, but right. That I figured, you know what? I'm still not living, you know, I'm not able to live out in my life. And, and here's the sentence. You said, we learned corporate finances, but we didn't, you know, it did not mean I made the transition into uh, getting rid of my, um, I, I'm trying to remember how you said it, like, uh, of, you know, you, you, you say mentality, but also like upbringing, you know, all the cultural, sociological, money scripts, money scripts. there you go, you know, th those, uh, those protocols or scripts. And so this is so exciting for me, your project, because, and I think a lot of us as academics, you know, we really have something to contribute, something we want to say. And we want to, a lot of the time we want to really branch out of uh, the five people who read the peer reviewed work. And, you know, I think you're such an inspiration for a lot of academic writers because I know a lot mm -hmm. of you are trying to write books. You know, um, I, I'm actually thinking of, of doing an advanced uh, workshop that's going to be called the academic memoir because so many of my uh, people are writing not kind of books that are either a self help book but they always have a storytelling component. So I would invite you, Asia, to also tell us a little bit about your process in uh, bringing together those different, that, right? I want to write about knowledge that I gained academically, but how do I then translate this into a book that can be um, addressing po a popular audience? I yes. also want to, uh, yeah, uh, just invite you to uh, talk a little bit about, uh, just update me because it's been a minute from the workshop and I know that you also have like five day jobs because you have your own business, <laughs> right? Yes, so yes. How is it going with the writing? Yeah, so, man. Oh, man, okay. So Sorry, talking about- I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> That's no, part of fine. the deal. Because part of what you said about transferring the knowledge to a popular audience, the, the mechanic that I'm using to do that, especially when you talk about knowledge, it's, it's finances. You know, they say that's the top topic that people get divorced over. That's the top topic that people argue over. That's the thing that nobody talks about. Like, it's something that, you know, for whatever reason, money, sex, and religion or death, I don't know how you want to put it, but it's just one of those topics that we're not so open to speak vulnerably, vulnerably about. And so what I use, the tool that I use to translate this information for somebody to a popular audience to actually receive is infographics. Um, and so we use the term infographics in the mainstream, but if we're talking about the academia space, it can almost be like a textbook, you know, because in textbooks, they use diagrams to illustrate, they, you know, show you a process. And so for me, the process of writing the book includes me typing out the black and white information you know, I'll go onto a graphic design uh, website myself to kind of visually orient the information. 
but a part of my um, holdup or a part of my obstacles with the writing is that because I'm not a graphic design artist, I'm at, I have to work with other people to actually translate the words into images. And so, you know, without directly writing, working with a textbook editor who already has that information on how to translate words into visual images, a part of my writing process started with first getting all the black and white down, second, dumping it onto a graphic design so that I can visually orient it. And then third is taking that rough graphic interpretation and sending that to a professional designer so that they could further format it, you know, make it look like an infographic, you know, a fun textbook, a workbook, if you will. Um, I love what you're saying here uh, in terms of, and, and to highlight, like, you know, you're very collaborative and very entrepreneurial. So, you know, I really think you can serve like as, you know, as, a, as an inspiration for a lot of us because, um, you know, you have a new unique original idea, right? And and then, you know, you are, you're serving as this translator, but look, you, um, what, what's really impressive to me as you, uh, hearing you talk about this process is that you are not, a sh you don't, you, you, you don't shy away from a challenge, you know, just because you don't know the skill, you are, okay, let me teach myself the skill. And uh, um, I'm sure it made your process take longer. So I just want to invite everybody to see, you know, when a book comes out, when Asia's book finally come out, right, nobody would know necessarily that, you know, that takes the book and the book helps them in their life. If it took one year, five years, 10 years, but we tend to have judgment, right, when the process is not going fast enough. Man, tell me about it, especially when you talk about, um, you know, sharing with other people soft deadlines, but that's another conversation. I'm sure um, you guys- oh, That's the conversation a lot of us are having here. So this is, you know, this is where I'm steering the conversation because okay. I guess what I'm trying to ask you, Aja, is like, how do you deal with, and, and has it been coming up for you? And, and also, you know, do, do, did you find any of the, you know, when we worked in the workshop, I do know, I remember you were one of the people, you, you know, you were like, man, this is, it. <laughs> you know, yes, I've been doing that. Yes, I've been doing that. So I, I just, you know, I, I would love to hear about that, but also, you know, just to, to, to use you as an inspiration, like you are teaching yourself new skills and as academic, you know, writers and you, you know, you do have that academic background, right? This is what makes our writing hard. We have to sometimes teach ourselves a new thing. I mean, actually for an academic piece of work to be, you know, worth anything, it needs to be about something new, about something that you are learning yourself and then teaching other people. Um, but it is an uncomfortable, right? So it's growth can be uncomfortable if you're going to put yourself in a situation that is, um, not what you already know how to do. And you know, uh, for opening this up for the academic writers, right? You never write a dissertation until you write a dissertation. Your first journal, and then you finish that, and now you have to write a, a journal article that you might have not written before. Finish that, now try a book chapter. Oh, now you have to do a grant. Oh, you did that? Write a monograph. It, it's, you know, your second book is not gonna be like your first book. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I I, I really so I can I can talk it? to it a bit, like talking about the yeah. process because, um, for me, like you mentioned, with the several day jobs, um, I have a business partner that we do real estate with, and so that block, you know, when you were talking about the time blocking yesterday, I realized for me that blocking during the day, you know, that's that's not practical for me because at any given time a certain phone call that you have contract hours deadlines office hours everything in real estate with the Atlanta market you know uh, houses are going off in 24 hours and so if my partner sends me something that's hot you know I would need to you know we want to get on it yeah. I have a, a window to put my to put, put my eyes on it for the numbers and so when you talk about this past year of you know also making sure that I keep my book as just as much a priority because it is for me in my heart, it's a priority. But if you were to look it's at your my soul's schedule, calling, right? It's my soul's calling. But if you were to look at my schedule for the past year, you might not uh, see the same thing. And even nice. though I know the benefits and the need to time block and to prioritize the writing time, you know, for me, it's okay, Monday through Friday, eight to five, it's not going to be those times. All right. So it's going to be after hours, but I need my time to work after or to rest after. And so what I've noticed, um, frankly, I've been quite reactive 
because I would send off information to the designer and then wait till they sent it back before I would touch it again. But um, for me, I noticed that the, when I finally would time block, whenever it did become time, like, okay, I have to get this next draft out. It would usually be on the weekends and it would be like all day long. Like I would say on Saturday, I'm not doing anything all day Saturday, except for getting through, you know, steps, you know, T through W because I'm like 92% done now. And so for me, you know, it'll be a Saturday where, um, you know, everybody knows that I'm not doing anything today. You know, I, you know, maybe I did schedule something in the morning, but uh, I would do that and then come home. But it would be I like- I love a that. So let's hang on my, my ear perks. So what does that, so does, what I'm hearing here is, is A, you located, you grab for the time you have, like Julia Cameron says, right? And then you're focusing on that. And then you said, everybody knows, meaning you are informing people in your life, hey, just like I need to be making my money by being available for my business, uh, you know, eight to five, Monday to Friday, Saturday is my time sanctuary, my time and space sanctuary to, to be doing this. Is that, yes, am I yes. hearing correct? Yes. That's absolutely right. And, and I noticed in those times, like you mentioned that you're a night person. I'm having to realize that I'm absolutely a night person. Like, I don't know if it's because my days, I just, I'm so dealing with so many other outside things that when the night comes and I'll get into a flow at like 10, 11 PM, like if I go until one, two, 3 AM, like I allow that to happen, even if I plan to sleep in the next day, because for me, you know, those three hours while there's nobody calling my phone are so That's important. Fantastic. So, so everybody pay attention, right? This is how this looks in a lived reality, right? Um, you might have to write your book, on the weekends, you know, you might have to. So I guess I guess my other question, just to play devil's advocate here a little bit. Um, well, I love before I do that, I love what you're saying. You're like, I know this is where I can catch my flow. Right. So this is what I'm trying to train people to do. Right. Ask yourself, you know, if you don't go against the correct time. Right. So you might have a judgment. Asia, for example, why don't I wake up at 5 a.m. every morning and I can put in my writing between five and seven? And because so many of these writing books tell you to do that, right? And you're like, wait, yes, because my brain is right, not working. I'm not a five, I'm a not a 5 a.m. person. I I tried that, you know. I tried Oh, it. good. Yeah. So share. So <laughs> you, you tried and what happened, right? Yeah. Didn't catch so what flow. happened was um uh, you know, I would set my alarm for 5 a.m. Whether I attempted, it wasn't even five, y'all. Let me just say it was like a 6 a.m. But for me, I would set my alarm for six and attempt to have this as my unbothered writing time. But if the night before I caught that flow at 12 or 1 a.m., then the 6 a.m. wouldn't work. And so when she's when she's talking about finding your flow, for me, it's this idea of time and we live in the Gregorian calendar where these are our business hours. This is when people are working, but as individuals and especially as creative writers, like fuck the time that they're giving us because unless you have to be at work and you know, maybe you do need a certain amount of hours per sleep, but if you are working on something that you care about, you know, you'll realize that sometimes that fuels you enough to where you don't need the same seven hours of sleep that you need if, you spent your time allowing yourself to do what you wanted to the night before. Maybe you only need four or five hours because you got that peace out and you, you know, now you're free to wake up during the day knowing that you got done what you wanted to get done. And I love, and you like, I want him here. And, you know, Asia, this is why you've always been an inspiring, you know, student and person for me is you, 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 tr you are a big trial and error person. You know, you tried this, it didn't work. If you wake up at six, it's not going to give give you your flow. So it's not going to give you the oomph. But what you were saying is, you know, you were listening in, you were trying to find out what is your best, correct inner sense of timing. And you figure out a way to work around to make that happen. Now yes. with, uh, I guess with COVID and everything and your business taking off um, and I know you've been working at it for a while. And so now it's 92% of, I guess my last question uh, for you so that I can try to help you as best as I can is right now, as we speak, what do you think the main hindrance is for you to get from where you are, uh, you know, whatever letter that is right to Z, I, yeah. I guess maybe you're a T or you're yeah. an S, right? How do we get you to Z? What is the one big uh, hurdle or Maybe it's not a hurdle, right? Opportunity. What do you need to do? Yeah. What, what is <clears throat> so what you said? Yeah. So 
I'm good on the reaction just because what I've committed to, to be working on, I realize that I have to realize the deadlines for everything. Um, because the, the book is in the designer's court right now, the ball's in their court. Um, the next thing for me to do on the book specifically is to go through the editing, actually copy editing, making sure the verbiage, um, the grammar, the spelling, all that stuff. I'm also adding in the, um, okay, I'm not a, you can tell I'm not a true academic. So, I'm trying to think of the word that is the reference or the bibliography right, of the actual the sources of the research. So, so let me ask you this. Are these assignments less exciting for you? Is this is this a hindrance because you know maybe it's not you know the easy or it's easy but boring? I don't know. Like I'm 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 wondering yeah. if there's a little bit of a you know to put out you know when you talked yes, yes. about getting it out, I could see the spark in the eye, and when you're talking about putting in the references, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and so the, I'll say the hindrance. Uh, I'm loud. Uh, the hindrance might be um, because I'm not a prof I'm not a true academic in the sense that I'm trained to reference my sources and to make sure that everything that I wrote as the narrative is actually supported, especially the science. I'm talking about the quantum science piece of it. Um, understanding that I'm referencing quantum physics and that science piece, um, making sure that whether, you know, I can go through and edit the copy, but making sure to have a professional to look over how I reference that and how I'm um, sourcing it to make sure that when I put this book out there, that it can actually stand on its own and it can. So let, let me ask you this. Do you have in that time? So, you know, you are already very collaborative. I guess the question is, you know, is there, and, and this is such a great reminder for a lot of us academics feel like we have to do it all by ourselves, but you know, uh, I actually have above my, one of the many mantras I have above my work. This is, is this for an editor to finish? <laughs> you know, like we do need to bring in, other people and it doesn't have to be an editor it could be uh, you know an accountability buddy somebody that you know is in the you know that you can read their stuff and and they can read your stuff and give um you know do, do, do you need to join like a, a writing group any kind of a collaborative space where you can you know get the support you need you know the hands on your back and be and then you know you're also somebody else's hands on their back to do that so that's like one of the questions i would ask you you know um, but also what I love about uh, hearing, you know, hearing your um, your story on this group is that, you know, it really reminds us that it takes many, 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 many years, hours of work and effort to bring a project to fruition. And it's the perseverance that's going to get you there. And I know that, you know, you you per, you are, you know, you're the little engine that's good, the big engine. <laughs> it could, right? You are persevering. <laughs> so, yes, yes. We're all very, rooting for you very much. So if I could help you with one thing, what, what would that be to help you right now? Uh, is this inspiration, you know, motivation by, by inspiration? Man, okay, so what you just wrote down, is this something an editor can finish? I actually, the th thing that got me speaking about or thinking about referencing the actual science and making sure that the flow of information, uh, she used the word sticky to make sure it's sticky enough for the reader to read through it on their own because we're talking about um analogy about your rocket ship as your financial vehicle exploring the quantum wealth universe um talking about quantum um talking about quantum physics and recognizing that only when you recognize the value of something only the individual has the ability to interpret what that value means to them even though if the price on the other side is universal the value that one receives is unique to each person, just like quantum physics, the observer, the observer effect. And so she was the one who uh, reminded me to make sure to have those professional or academic scientific resources. So she's going to be the she's a she has a publishing company. She's starting as a publishing company. She's a writer herself. And so I'm going to go back to her for that piece. Once I go through the grammar and the copy, I'm going to go back to her for that piece, for the editing and to make sure that the book has what it needs. But for you, um, I know we talked about the printing of it um, and the dis not necessarily distribution. Um, I do have a printing company that I've sourced, but if you have any You're such an entrepreneur, printing, see, you're, you're just, that, that is a whole, and this is, I'm sure, very educational for a lot of, you know, because I, I, I could, you know, traditional academic publishing is very much kind of come and play on the turf of the journals or the book publishers, and there's a whole song in it, and we will be talking more about that in Monday. But I actually love what you're saying here. And this, if this can inspire, you know, uh, uh, those of you who are watching now or will watch later, you know, there are many, many ways uh, to self-publish 
that whole stigma we have around self-publishing is it's so ridiculous in this day and age, right? In the digital age where, and you know, with the, by the way, there are paper shortages coming and affecting the book uh, industry Ooh. in a big way. So wow. I think- I didn't think of that. Keep growing. It, I think yeah. the same thing in real estate with the lumber. We had major lumber shortages last year. There you go. And so I think it's gonna go more and more into digital. And like, when you go digital, the, the, you, you, you quickly you learn how much more sense it makes to actually, uh, it's not even self-published. There's are there are a lot of really good publishers that help you self-publish, uh, and I actually, uh, you, you know, I can recommend a few. So if this is something that interest uh, has uh, is of interest uh, for anybody, please let me know. Well, Asia, I cannot. We we have to finish, but I cannot uh, tell you enough how excited. You know, I'm rooting for you. I'm excited for you. I love that you're taking. You know, this is such as, again, your soul's calling, because I know you are helping a lot of, uh, especially, uh, if I remember correctly, your, your book, you know, was especially directed at uh, women and um, uh, communities of uh, color, marginalized communities, uh, those who are most affected by- Think Latin about it, Sharon, because access. those are the people who were traditionally held out of the money conversation. It was only old white men who were allowed to own property at a certain point. The women had to be the maids, the kids stay in kids' place. And so, you know, it right. makes perfect sense why there are certain communities that have a hard time grasping around how to earn, spend, and relate with their money. Absolutely. And so you're stepping up as a leader in a big way for that. And and this is why I wanted to, you know, this is what I want to do. I want to encourage you to continue and take it over the, you know, the, the that finish line, because Thank your you. audience is waiting out there for you to help them with this. This is not, you know, and again, this is such an easy case of, of uh, everybody, you know, Asia is a really easy client or really easy case because for her the passion is very clear it's very clear to see why the passion is driving is in the driver's seat so you know i just want to again congratulate you for all the you know hard work and everything that you've done so far and i am here if you need more uh help inspiration motivation um but i just know that you are very uh you know you're motivated you're gonna get it done but yeah let me know if there's anything i can do <laughs> to help thank you, you for it. hosting these spaces this this writer's unblock in the unconventional way and the practical it was you know it was everything for me at, at the beginning of quarantine perfect timing yes i mean that it's one of those silver lining there you know we, we didn't enjoy the last two years but you know honestly the need for a more collaborative self-compassionate and just, you know, compassion. I see so many, you know, not to go into a rant, but so many of the spaces uh, where academics converge to talk about their writing are so cutthroat, um, you know, competitive, posturing, you know, and so we come here to share vulnerability and I really appreciate you for uh, jumping in today. All right, well, Asia, thank you so much. I know people have questions and comments in the chat. Um, um, I'm trying to see if, yeah, everybody's just thanking you and uh, um, yes, I know some people have to leave. Those of you who are now watching on, thank you, Asia, so much. And let, keep us posted on, on how it's going, okay? Uh, all right. And those of you watching on Facebook, you if you, it's not too late to jump on the Zoom. If you uh, want, it's, uh, uh, I put the Zoom uh, invitation in the comments. And it's also on the feature tab of the group. Anybody else on the Zoom right now that wants to jump in and... Uh, you know, it doesn't need to be, it can be, uh, I, I can I can prompt you. So, you know, I today's session, I wanted us to workshop what we have learned. So I guess I have a question for everybody and I would love for you to, uh, if anybody wants to come up and talk about this. If you, if there was a takeaway from this week, from all the activities, for those of you who participated in the activities, what would that be? You know, what, did you learn anything? You know, and again, if this was my, one of my regular workshops, I don't want to do this right now on live on Facebook. I would probably what I would do is I would take five or 10 minutes and I would have you just write to ask yourself that. So if anybody wants to jump up and I see that Miss Dr. Tiffany is here today. I actually want to interview you a whole uh, session, Tiffany, one day. So if you want to jump in, I, I see here AJ is thanking everybody. So um 
Tiffany A, hey, let me ask you to unmute. Do you want to jump up and talk to everybody? Tiffany is a, a graduate now of both the Accelerated Summer Workshop and the Advanced Workshop. We had a whole semester. Her book is absolutely fantastic. Do you want to jump up and just tell us a little bit about this? Uh, sure. Can everyone hear me? I'm sorry. Dr. I'm, Tiffany. Um, I'm on my phone, so um, and, I and I'm awesome, awesome. So um, I'm just going to jump in, but I appreciate the workshop because I'm a sociologist, um, again, trained to write as an academic. And so I have a book project that's really kind of very much like a memoir. I mean, it's about running and running in white spaces, but I wanted to write it so that it's for a general audience, not just for yes, academics. Say, say, explain to everybody a little bit more. Give us your book. It's such a fantastic book. And I mean, you know, I'm I'm no longer objective. So I feel so involved because we've been in the book. It's such a fantastic book. You you do have it under contract, right? So do you want to yes. share a little bit? Yeah. Sure. Um, I never know where to start in this journey. So um, so long story short about my book, my mother had passed away from cancer about 10 years ago. And, you know, as academics, we're trained to keep going, especially as women and women of color, of like, I'm just going to keep going and go through my pain and go through my grief, which is unhealthy and just crazy. And I just kept going and going to the point that I thought my spirit was going to break. So as I'm putting on a good face, because, you know, we're the good academics, I mean, that strong woman, and you just keep going. Um, a friend of mine had asked me to participate in her five mile relay team. And so because I didn't want anyone to know I was grieving because that really makes sense. I said, sure, never run a day in my life because running is stupid. Why do you run? That's something white people do. <laughs> just, I'm like, I don't do that. I'm Here more of like a party research girl. questions, right? Why do you run? <laughs> exactly. I was like, uh -uh. but I participated in this race, not training again never run a day in my life but something happened when i was running and i and i talk about you know if it was adrenaline or endorphins but i actually felt alive so i was pretty numb when my mother had passed again you're kind of in the world but not living in the world and so as i started to run i started to kind of heal so i would like run and i would cry and i would just talk to my mom and just you know the emotions came oh. out and so as I was running more and, and working through my grief, being a sociologist, I started to notice my space around me. And I'm not familiar with running culture at all, but I was saying to myself, why is running so white? Where are some black women who run? Like, I'm not understanding this. And so my sociological knowledge and excitement started to kind of come back again. I and love so that. More, and so the more I ran, the more I was unpacking these things, the more I started to ask these questions, I started to get excited, started to kind of feel again. Right. And so hang on, I'm gonna stop you right here and we're gonna continue, we're exactly here, but people pay attention. What Dr. Tiffany is giving us now is as an inspiration is the life cycle of an academic idea. And I love how, you know, uh, I, can I quote you with the no Fs to give? <laughs> Dr. Yes, Tiffany is- yes. You know, you're, you're a full or associate professor, right? Full going on full. full. That one full percent, professor, right? So she's you know published and everything. And when she came into uh, even accelerated workshop, she was like, "This book, I don't. It's a passion project. I'm done proving about that. I'm a big sociologist, whatever. I I want to write this book. But what I love it, you're, you're telling us the story. And by the way, correct me if I'm wrong." we are now here in the book kind of as it unfolds and that was not structured at all before we started working in the way right so it was a lot of jumbled ideas and questions all great very inspiring but you know we were we did a journey uh to get you to where right this artist so it's so beautiful to see you so we can talk about this a little bit more but i just want everybody to notice your ideas come to you not necessarily when you're focused on let me find an idea for my <laughs> academic book right yeah. uh it's part of your lived experience and what i love about giving me that story you know you are telling a story of how you know i love that moment when you're saying and this is i'm going already into the coaching because uh you said as a sociologist i started noticing my environment Right. And that moment of then I started asking questions and it's a way in for an audience to say, look, I was grieving. I started running, starting running. I started feeling alive. But going back to life, I remembered kind of who I am and started looking around and asking these questions. And, you know, look, it's, it's such a lovely way to 
again, organize. Now, this is also organizing your story as you're writing, because this is an academic memoir. Uh, and you're part of the inspiration for the academic memoir. <laughs> like, I'm thinking we need to have a whole class. So, yeah. No, it so was so helpful. I mean, I, I appreciate taking your, your courses because, again, I just, nothing was planned. Um, my area of sociology is... Um, urban sociology community. So really what I'm doing is kind of like a sociology of sport, but it intersects things with, with race and gender and, oh, let me go back. So in order to, as I'm healing and I have this great idea, I'm like, why don't I, as I'm looking for black women um, in this white space and asking these questions, I'm like, why don't I run a half marathon in every state so I can know more about the sport and find more black women. And this is such a brilliant idea. And this is awesome. I can take my mom with me. This will be our mother and daughter trip. And so, and so I just started um, traveling all 50 states, running a half marathon and taking field notes, um, not knowing where this is going to go, but just kind of you know, and especially in the time of um, COVID, Black Lives Matter, that man that was in the office, Amon Aubrey, like all the stuff, and Black women traveling solo, right? Like all these things, I'm traveling through this country and taking notes and just really thinking about my space and being a Black woman. Anyway, um, so as I'm gathering all this, the idea started to form of how this should be. And I still wasn't quite sure. And so taking the workshop, I learned how to to do storytelling, how to craft, uh, right. how to- kind Yeah, of let's talk a little bit about, uh, here's my question for you. So at what point did you contract it? Cause I think you came into the workshop already having a contract and can I can I out your uh, publisher? Oh. It's NYU, right? It's, it's not, so, you know what I'm saying? Like this is, uh, this is an attractive, exciting project. Um, but I do, I want you to share with everybody that you can get a contract and you know what you came in with you know, you're a very fluid, like you, you put it on, on paper, but you know, remember early on, I was like, just keep going. You know, you had a bunch of stuff written and a lot of it was in repetition and the organization wasn't there. You were just like state by state. And we were like, you knew already, you were not going to have a book that just go like, and this is what happened in North Dakota. <laughs> right? right. But it was already under contract. So I really want everybody to invite you to think about that. And Monday we will talk more about publishing that you don't have to have the full thing fully fleshed before you're so deep in it that you already know there's a book contract there, right? And then maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you came in with when you started working in the, you know, uh, through the workshops. Um, and I'm not, I'm not taking credit for your, your work, but it's, I love guide, you know, you can't guide someone through a project that they don't have, but you had the project. Well, I kind of want to go back to what Asia was saying, like, it takes a village, like I knew I had this really good idea, but I didn't know what to do with it or how to shape it. And so as I'm doing kind of my own lit review of like, you know, where are the black women in running spaces, and I didn't find it in popular literature, I didn't find it in academic literature, that was like that, hmm, I'm on to something. Gap. You found the you know? gap. So I'm like, I'm running and I'm this, this PhD. And so let me put this voice out there because we are invisible in the spaces and no one's talking about. It. So that's what I knew. I'm like, ha ha ha. Um, and so it wasn't quite formulated at the time, but when I wrote my book proposal, mm -hmm. I'm like, this is my idea. This is why I think this is like a jewel, but it's rough and I might need help to, to, to make the jewel shine, but I'm not quite sure. So I wrote this proposal again, making up, like, I think these, how the chapters might go. I think this is my idea. I'm not quite sure. And when I submitted it, uh, the editors were like, we like this. We see the potential in it, but it's going to need some work. And I'm like, I agree. Um, yes. but then I the love this. It's really going to be important for a lot of people, Tiffany, hearing this. Because they think a lot of us think we have to have something so perfect before we propose it for a publisher or before we even you know get in it to work on it. And so I think this is such a fantastic example that you're giving to. And again, especially I do appreciate you know the the diversity and the, the deep commitment to uh, fostering you know b b hands on on other people's backs because you know people who are going to see you Asia and you Tiffany coming up and telling that story it's going to be an inspiration that is going to be so important and you guys are some of the most inspiring writers I know and I so I'm so honored having you know work with you so Tiffany you know yeah you had this idea uh, a diamond in the rough and I do remember you saying this coming in to the first to the accelerated workshop in the summer um and then you know i started reading your work and it was it was so beautiful your writerly voice right but you had doubt you had some misgivings and doubt so do you want to share a little bit about that process 
Yeah, because it was the, the unknown. I think we are so trained to to make things perfect and fine tune it. And and this was new territory. And I'm like, I, I don't know how to write this. I, I don't like I don't know what I'm doing, but I, I knew enough to like ask because I needed someone to help me kind of massage this or kind of work on my my craft. And I didn't. And it, and it wasn't like, again, I'm so used. I have a you know, when you write your dissertation, it's kind of linear and how it goes. I'm like, you know, you know, I always tell you, I'm like, this I have no plan. Totally I don't know. And so what I appreciate with you, you're like, just put words on paper. We'll figure out the rest later. Just put words on paper. And I'm like, I don't, let's just write it. And so, cause I was trying to think how to and, write, how to and edit. Tiffany, let, me, let me tell you this. I remember that, you know, when you came in, you know, and this is, it's not going to look the same. Like I, I see Elizabeth is on this call, for example. I think Elizabeth was also one of the people where I was like, just keep writing it. You have it. You know, some people, you know, when you come in, it was so clear for me you know, I would read your stuff and you're, I think you can't even recreate the amount of doubt you had back then. You're like, I don't know. Do I have a book? Like what is going on in this product? Like you knew you wanted to do it and you loved it, but you were like, this is so turned around and confused, but I could see the structure. And for you, it was like, yeah, keep, keep writing it. And then we will keep reading it. And when we started reading and also the group feedback, right. You know, when, when, so say, yeah, if you can, so, you know, can you re- recreate, you know, from that, like, because there were several turning points, and I think it's going to be helpful for people to understand yeah. how a project evolves, like, it, it, you kept writing, and then what started emerging, right? Yeah, it started to emerge, and you, you were like, okay, repeat yourself, that's fine, because I, you know, I wasn't sure the order, how it would sound, again, do I go state by state, and I could see themes, you know, at that, that point, or this point, I've I've done 47 states. So again, I've been collecting the data and it's been on my mind, but then how do I theme it so that a general audience can read it and not be like, what is this? Like, how do I tell this story that will keep you engaged? Or, and so I wasn't sure. And so, you know, in our group getting feedback and saying, oh, okay, like you get this great. Or there's not enough of this. Or just as we talked about this theme of homelessness, like I couldn't see the themes that were more themes that were in it that I can connect it because it's so layered. And so um, other I'm people like, could oh. see and kind of give that back to you and say, these are like, you know, you have, uh, I, I like, you know, when we do feedback in the group and this is, you know, we do this both in, uh, in the accelerated, but a lot more in the advanced, right? I tell people, you know, I teach, I train people gently how to give feedback in a way that's nice, that's good, that's helpful. It doesn't mean you don't uh, offer constructive criticism, but constructive would be the key word, right? And so what I tell people to do is to start with, here is what you have going in this book. <laughs> or in this chapter or in what we've read right and so when we give back to the person like here's what i'm reading that you have going here are the questions i'm seeing uh, driving you right uh here is what i see you have going it's a really good way to to get a person kind of to see themselves and go like oh yeah this is what i have going (laughs) Right. And what, right. I, and what I appreciate what we learned, Asia was talking about this about time, you know, we learned about how to, you know, block your time and manage your time. And because um, I'm on, sabbat- well, my sabbatical is about to be over, but I was on sabbatical and I'm like, oh, I have time to write. Mm. Um, but what what are things going to be like when I'm back in full academic swing and I'm on committees and president of this and teaching blah 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 and I was like ooh um, but just learning about how to do your time and what what is the best time for you and just getting kind of a routine going so that when I'm in back in the, the shit show of academia I'm like ooh and so I just want to show you I mean I even brought this on vacation with me but over the summer, because we work together, this is this is 188 draft pages. And I know Yay. that there will be multiple drafts, but this is what I, I got. And so I'm taking the time in a lovely place to just go through this and see which, what's here. And which is up. also partly, you know, you texted me saying, I'm on vacation. I love that. I love to be the poster child for vacation. <laughs> Tiffany was texting me, you know, look, I'm on vacation. I did the thing. I took the vacation. And Tiffany, you are very good at doing that. So, I mean, especially since you had the sabbatical, right? So can you talk a little bit about that, that, that rest and recharge uh, yeah, cycle? That's- Again, I think it goes back to, you know, when my mother had passed, I'm grieving, but it's like, no, you still have to keep going and keep being that superwoman, that strong woman and, and not saying no, or like, I need some time. And 
what I learned, which is so simple, but we don't do it is stop, rest. Like if it's not coming to you, it's not coming to you. Like you can just have those moments, which I appreciate because it made a better product. And I'm like, oh, rest, right, stop. Okay. And so, and not beat yourself up over it. I think that's what we do. I think it's, yeah, that, so it that sounds to me like you're talking different. about the stages really, in a way, right? You learned. So did you, did you feel like you, you know, you learned about the, identifying the different stages and then accepting them rather than fighting them? That's, that's what it sounds like. I did. Instead of I'm like, you know, nothing's coming to me now or, you know, I am tired. It's okay because I knew that tomorrow morning. And again, <laughs> unlike you, Asia, I am a morning person. So in the morning is my like, yes, I'm one of those disgusting people. I get up, I still run. So for me, running is my like, okay, I'm good to go. Um, and so taking that time to be like, yes, and I can think. So, so at nighttime, I'm I'm no good. I am beyond. I am like, mm -mm. but <laughs> I can get up and I'm like, ooh. Yes. And actually I'm sitting here this morning and with, with, with all of this, and I was just making my notes and doing my thing like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just seeing what I need to do to work on the second draft. Um, Absolutely. And so I also, I, this is so great. Like I, seeing your draft make fills me with happiness. And I've seen, you know, I've seen, you've already had long draft. Um, we've learned, and I can really tell you guys from working with Tiffany, uh, you do not need to to, to think that your first draft needs to look anything like your last draft, right? I, you know, people who finish things are the ones who are allowing themselves to have like just messy spew of tangled ideas, right? Like, so for example, you know, Tiffany, whenever, you know, and, and, and again, I'm trying to kind of pull out and extract um, universal principles from here. So I actually love that Asia was like, I'm a night person. And Tiffany's like, no, I'm a morning person. Yes, that's the point. You know, what kind, you know, what is your, time what is your correct timing and when you work with it you accomplish but you know another thing tiffany that i really think could help people you know i always say with structure fake it till you make it you know you had in your mind i can get it out my notes are state by state you knew the book is not going to be like state by state but it was a way to get out what you had learned by running state by state then the second stage was, you know, I read the draft with the state by state and there were so many beautiful nuggets. There was this part, suddenly you were talking about gentrification because you were running through. And then you talked about black hair, you know, and, and running and black hair and how, you know, that was a really uh, fantastic example for running is so white. What do you mean by running is so white? How the whole merchandise and thing around it is not... Uh, thinking about your hair and, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It was like all these, um, and then, you know, suddenly you're talking about uh, your family memories, your cousins coming to see your, um, you know, you could see you running and then you were, you went into talking about, uh, you know, all sorts of organizations and communities within the black community around the running, but you were connected to other things. And then you were talking about flying and your mom uh, and her role, you know, right? So, uh, cause she was um, a flight, uh, right? A flight attendant or, well, you know. She worked a reservationist, but yeah. The reservation, yeah. But, you know, then you talk about a childhood of you, again, like just you in all those spaces that maybe your body, your hair, your people, your type, uh, you didn't even know you didn't, you know, belong. and then, you know, last but not least, I want to, you know, one of the epiphanies we had with the last draft, right? So what I'm trying to tell everybody is you can write your way into clarity. And this is a lot yeah. of what I do. Yeah. Write yeah. your way into yeah. clarity. You zoom in on your topic. Knowing your topic is not something you fully know even before you start. That's very true. I mean, now that I was, re I'm, you know, reading this draft, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, this should look this way. But, like, it's there. Um, and the clarity from our conversations is, is now evolving. So where I started from earlier last year to where I am now, I mean, it's, it's the process. And I know come June or July, this will be very different. But, but the pieces are there. Because now I see like, oh, yes. this makes sense because it's right. It's, 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 it's this um, autoethnography, this academic memoir. So how do I combine the, the sociological stuff with the, with the, the other stuff without it being exactly. so, so preachy. And again, I'm talking about, I always tell people it's a way to talk about the ism, right? Racism, sexism, classism, but without talking about it, but I am talking about it. Um, oh, you are, you are talking about it. Yes, problem. exactly. Right. And then the theme. So so then I want to, you know, to share with everybody, you know, the way we kind of 
what I love about working with Tiffany, you know, you keep writing, you just, you stay with it. And you had a sabbatical, so, you know, not, this is not to try to, you know, shame anybody, but, but I, I have a feeling that you would anyways. But what I'm, um, what I'm trying to say is, right, you get a manuscript, me as a uh, developmental mm-hmm. editor, and you see the gems, you know, that part about the hair, when you started writing about, you know, uh, flying, you know, and that history, like, I, I could see how the personal and the sociological and the cultural are weaved together. And then we could start seeing themes coming together. And then we, what I'm trying to say is that when you wait for the right moment with a writer working on a manuscript, the aha moment comes and it can, you know, and it come, it can come inside for the writer. And But when you invite somebody from the outside, right? I remember our last conversation, you know, we just talked about these themes coming together. And suddenly it was very clear what the, what the structure might be, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, so. And it's true, because as I go back through it, you know, as we talked about kind of the home homelessness theme and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, yes, because I couldn't see that. And so I'm like, I can tie those pieces in. And again, the, so if the I can, kind of. If, if I can tell, can I, can I share the, the, the moment of aha with, right? Remember what, so, you know, she wrote this beautiful sentence about understanding with her grief, you know, and again, it goes like, she was avoiding the grief. She started, right? You started running, you, you came back alive. You started thinking again and you were processing the grief. And you said something about understanding that when you lost your mom, you lost your sense of home in the world. And then, you know, I turned around to you and I said, and then you went into a space so white <laughs> that he's not feeling like home at all. <laughs> and <laughs> like the running. And so we were like blown away, both of us in that session. And suddenly there it was, it was a doorway through which to understand how you can structure the narrative uh, part of it. So that, and then we talked about, uh, about tools from narrative that academics are not so familiar with, right? So we talked about- The timeline, which I appreciate that, that that was the aha moment. You're like, do a timeline. I'm like, oh. Okay, and I could visually see it when I did the timeline of, you know, running, I've been running for five years. So running and then what was happening and the grief, how I was feeling. And I'm like, oh. All right, so let me explain this real quick. Basically, I was telling, you know, and this is something we studied in both the accelerated and the advanced workshop, right? From narrative, we academics don't think about that so much, but in a narrative, there's always what, you know, what is the present time of your narrative? And it's a construction, it doesn't have to be the present, right? Obviously it's not, there's the present time and then there's what is flesh back and flesh forward, right? And I was telling you, so what is, you know, so because you didn't uh, start your book with the uh, with starting running, you started uh, the book before with the, uh, losing your mom, which all made sense because all of these things were important. And then I said, wait a minute, I think we're finding the, pre- the present line is, this is the situation I was in grief. I didn't know what was going on. I started running and things started happening. And so this is the present. And then we do flashbacks, right? So the, what moves the thing forward is, and then I ran there and then, I, right? But then you do flashbacks, which again, in an acad- this is where we trick the academic part, right? Because the flashback tells it's a personal narrative in some cases when you talk about your experiences, but this is where you also tuck in analysis. So flashback can be lit review flashback can be what came before us right so we were to bring together the narrative because this is a, a, a it's an experimental book it's a it's a legit academic memoir we needed to let Tiffany first just get it out and then we could see it and then we can bring uh tools from uh narrative stylistic tools but also academic stylistic tools to try to figure out a structure and then it became like okay this is the present time and now you're doing this is flashback, this is flash forward, great. Now we can find, and right, so I'm assuming the pages you're showing me are the new draft you wrote after we uh, had this epiphany, which is exciting. Um, well, actually, no, it's just, I need to print it out because I'm, I need, I'm tactile, I need to touch it. So I just yes. wanted to print it out just to see, because again, you do so many drafts and it was just, uh, just write, just write some things. And I just need to see like, what do I have now? And then with the, the new knowledge that, you know, I now have, now I can go back. But I'm like, just because it was just so much. I'm like, I don't know what I have right now. I don't know how it was ordered. Right. So I can like make some sense of it and then go back in and weave, weave the flash forward and the flash um, back into it. 
Fantastic. So you've 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 kept at it. Okay. So I think we're running out of time, but I do have. So here's my last question for you, Dr. Tiffany. What is next? I would love for you to share. You know, I know that you're uh, kind of bracing for impact as you are done with your sabbatical and you're going in. And by the way, I have a suggestion for everybody. You know, uh, I like to think about the tension between bracing for impact versus embracing change. When we brace right? When you know a transition is coming and when you're bracing for impact, right? You're clenched, you're close, you're reactive, you're defensive. You know, I invite you to kind of think how to relax, relax the bracing into kind of embracing the change that is coming. So I, I, I would love to hear from you because I know you've been thinking through you know, the tools, you know, how do I, I, I remember you told me last time, it's going to get real, the scheduling, everything It's going to get, it's going to become a lot realer. Uh, so can you say a little bit more about, you know, as you're thinking about your writing life, the growth you've had in developing a writing practice and cultivating a writing practice, because a lot of the questions that I've been getting throughout this week was, you know, I'll rephrase. Okay, lady, great idea. Yeah, take the time to explore your inner world, but I have a deadline. So can you right. speak a little bit to that? Well, I think, you know, again, and I, I like the new, like, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm going to embrace it. Um, one thing that we talked about is just boundaries. Um, and this is so important to me. This is my passion project and I want to get it done. So I need to be very good about my boundaries and incorporating this into my daily. So I get up, I run, I teach class, but also this has to be a part of the routine, which it was not before, um, and being very protective of it. And so going back, so even though I, I sent uh, an email to the editor, I'm like, I need an extension because it was supposed to be done, um, by, January of this year, but it's fine like, yeah, because the editors know, right? Don't worry like, about that, right? That uh, ain't gonna happen. But, Good, but that's I also a boundary mind. because you renegotiated what you needed. So, guys, pay attention. What do you yeah. need? Make that need be respected by everybody around you. So, what is the plan going in to create those boundaries? And so that's part of it. And then, you know, as you always say, you know, certain things take time. Like, right? why? Why is it so rushed? And so my personal deadline for me is like, well, let me see if I can try to get this done by June. I'm mean, again, that's just me because um, I need a goal for myself. Oh, for sure. And by the way, I'm not knocking it down at all, right? This is not like, oh, don't have a goal. Of course, you know, you can have a goal, but then you set the goal and you have flexibility. I guess I'm wondering, I do remember, Tiffany, to correct me if I'm wrong, we were talking about that. I think I, I did mention to you, look, when you're teaching, does anybody expect you to be doing service or to be doing, you know, whatever, or go hang out with like, it could be people in your life, right, friends? Does anybody expect you to leave the classroom unless there's a fire? You know what I mean? So to bring that same commitment to, you know, create the time sanctuary, just like nobody would expect you to get up and leave a classroom in the middle of, I don't know, introduction to sociology right, and go right. do something, right? I, I think we've we've discussed that. So, I, I mean, are you and thinking- I got and say, and I got smart in a sense of it's it's you know working smarter, not harder. So as I'm prepping for classes for this fall spring, I'm like, how can this work for me and my book? Yes. What, what materials can I give the students that will really benefit me while also helping them too? Oh wait, I'm gonna go to a conference or or two, but let me write a paper that relates to what I'm like. So I'm trying to like incorporate everything that I'm doing together, so it's not like this is separate from here, this is separate from here. I'm like, no, this is keeping with what I need to do, but I'll still oh, that's still fantastic. do. Fantastic. Yes, and this is, I think, you know, yeah, we do a lot of that in the accelerated and the advanced. It's like learn how to make everything go towards. Um, one clear goal, but I mean, I think honestly, the advanced, uh, it's now going to be incorporated in the, in the regular, uh, foundational workshop, um, the importance of gaining clarity when you have clarity about your goals. So, you know, I, I, and I love Tiffany, you're giving me an opportunity to say people, if you think that I am against setting goals, <laughs> you need to, you know, once you work with me, you know, you set goals, but you set goals from a place of clarity, you gain clarity, and part of getting clarity is understanding, okay, where am I for real? I call it emotional sobriety. Like, yeah. this is where I am for real. I'm not going to knock down where I am. I'm going to accept exactly where I am. 
I'm going to see not just how where I am means I suck and I'm failing and I have to be somewhere else by rushing, you know, my whole body clenches even thinking about that, right? But like relax to say, okay, where I am is okay. I'm just going to accept that and then gain clarity about where I need to be, understand the stages, understand what, you know, my needs are and then move uh, forward with that. And I think part of the clarity, again, from you know, our conversation, we'll call it the breakthrough, is I can see now the finish line. I mean, I know it's a little further away, but before I'm like, I don't know. I mean, it's this thing and it, it will come. It will come eventually. But now that I, I have more clarity, as you said, I'm like, oh, I know what needs to be done to get to the finish line. And that's more of the motivational push drive of like, I got to do these things, make these corrections. And so I can have a tight, tight draft so I can send it to the editor. But that's the thing. I don't think I saw the finish line before because I, I there was love no the clear. running metaphor, Stephanie, <laughs> seeing the finish line and you do long distance running. So I, I the, the finish line, uh, yeah. it's a great, it's a great uh, metaphor and analogy for the writing process, you know, when you do the finish line. Um, and I know Elizabeth needs to, I know we are running out of time. Guys, bear with me. Stay. This today is going to be a longer, a uh, little bit longer. And then Monday we have another bonus session. Um, but Tiffany, thank you so much for sharing your experience. I am so excited about your book. I cannot even, I, th I think you know, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about it. Um, and it's, 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 it's just such a blessing to get to, uh, you know, be a part of, of that process. But I love what you're saying about, you know, gaining the clarity, seeing the yeah. finish line, but also that it's a reminder for everybody to see you can still make a lot of progress towards finishing the thing before you see the finish line. Earlier on, yeah. you just one of those, I, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering if I told you that before, like Tiffany, I have a lot of these visuals, right? So Writing a book or writing a dissertation or a long project, it's like taking that leap, like um, like the coyote that like, uh, what is it called? It's jumping over the Grand Canyon, but you got to keep yeah. doing what, what? I, I keep forgetting what Roadrunner, Roadrunner, right? Roadrunner. Rally, coyote. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, you know, there's the jump that you take over and like, right, he goes like this in the air. When does he fall? Only when he looks down and notices you know, so we need to not look down. We need to keep going and then we can make the leap. So there is a space where we have to just have faith. And as you gain confidence and you continue with the faith and you continue with the clarity, you start seeing that uh, finish line and then it becomes concrete. It becomes here's the here are the steps that I need to take. And then you take them. But yeah, I typically I really hope that I mean, I know I'm going to stay in the loop, but uh, oh, yeah. I know so, girl, but uh, I'm just, uh, what I am uh, wishing on you and for everybody that's watching this and inspiring is uh, uh, maybe you come back and do another uh, interview on the group to tell us how it worked when you came back in to the fry, right? And had to uh, find a way, because I know you will, right? To, to, to do the time dance, right? So this was a big theme this week that we've been looking at. The time dance is like, okay, now I got to do this, now I got to do that. Remember to rest remember yeah. um, to recharge, remember to take downtime. And the time you take away, you know, you're not not working when you are not working. If you do it correctly and you really let it, let yourself kind of rest and take a distance, it's very important because you can gain perspective and more clarity because, you know, there are cycles um, and this is what we will talk about with publishing as well, the cycle, the life cycle of an academic paper, right? And it makes sense. Um, and again, especially because academic writing is so freaking hard. And your book, while a memoir and a personal narrative is highly academic, you know, and it's actually going to be educating. I, I, I love the connection with Asia's book as well. It's, it's going to be bringing that knowledge to a wider reading audience. Um, so, but what I'm trying to say is, especially with academic writing, when you have to have some time to process how am I going to bring these ideas that I know from my research in my world and translate them into linear, you know, into sentences and paragraphs that other people would be able to understand and, 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 and get my, you know, my, my arguments, right? All right, so with that said, I really do appreciate you jumping in today from your vacation. <laughs> and I and and I and yeah, and come back and, and let us know. And everybody check out, you know, NYU Press. It's coming uh, maybe 2020, late 2022, maybe 2023. Definitely 2022. 
three. Um, okay, but, okay, no I mean, pressure. Maybe 2024, but we're going to shoot for 2023. Too many twos. Yes. Yeah, let's, let's say 2023, maybe 2024. Uh, you know, when you see this, you'll be like, I saw Dr. Tiffany before she was a superstar. Because our secret, right, our secret goal is like me. I'm like, she, this, she, this needs to be an Oprah book of the month club. So I'm starting, see, I'm sending it out to the universe, an Oprah. Okay, Tiffany's book, okay, I'm just saying. All right. Hey, my love. Thank you for jumping on. Woo, no guys. problem. Okay. We are well, well, well over time. Anybody else wants to ask me a question or make a comment before? Um, let me see. There was some stuff in the chat. So a lot of people, uh, you know, um, I don't, I, okay. There were questions for Tiffany. Uh, so, but anyways, anybody wants to jump in and ask a question? All right, and you guys can stay on the Zoom later with, uh, uh, all right, so I see there are conversation going on in the Zoom, but I can read, but I do want to, okay, so you know what, let me share just this for today, and then we wrap it up, and there's more, um, okay, I just wanted to kind of wrap up our Friday by recapping and sending you over to the weekend, I want you guys to engage over the weekend, do the workbook if you haven't already, and send it to me, and come back Monday for our bonus session, uh, I just want to give you a reminder of what we, what I challenged you to do, I challenge you to create a writing practice that's regular and flexible, focused yet playful and fun, is predicated on radical self-acceptance, uh, where you respect your individual rhythms, your energy levels, your ways of knowing or thinking or executing, and you take into account the reality of your life. Uh, a writing practice that is slow and patient, uh, planned well, yet allows for setbacks, confusion, mistakes, and accidents, exhaustion, etc. Now, I want to tell you, I get it that it's not something you can pivot into doing over one day. And this is why I do long-term workshops with this. You know, it takes, it's a long process. We did a free, you know, intense week. Uh, and, and it could be kind of, you know, a way to provoke you into, um, you know, positively provoke you, right? Pro provoke you to... Uh, find the place inside that wants to align with these things. But I don't want you to, you know, think if you can't change your habits overnight because habits don't ever change overnight. Um, oh, thank you. I'm getting some uh, people are thanking me. Uh, I, I do appreciate it. Um, so if it was inspiring, if it was helpful, I just want to make sure you guys don't feel, daunt, you know, that it's too daunting to create that change, but it does take time. I do, um, I do want to go uh, remind you again that the workshop, um, you know, is now available uh, with a hundred dollars off. It's a really good price, I think. If you do need to talk to me about financial need, and this is the reason you, you're, you know, you're hesitating to take. Do not hesitate to ask me. Um, I do want to say that I'm not trying to kind of, you know, be too self-celebratory, but you guys know if you are in my workshop. There is not one time I taught this workshop where I didn't hand out, uh, get, gave out scholarships. I usually, you know, uh, uh, single moms, uh, academics, you know, of, of marginalized groups, people of color. I, I always, like people in the uh, developing world, I work, you know, once I have the, um, this is a community effort, right? So we always have a combination of people who have research money, who have no problem, you know, affording to take a, a writing class and then when I have the basics covered this is where like I can start really giving people who who just you know who have deserve it everybody deserves it I think but you know when you have real financial uh need and which of course you know a lot of grad people it's graduate students and uh even junior faculty and definitely adjuncting you know people that are precariously employed I don't want you to be turned away from, you know, if you do feel uh, cold to do the work with me, I will work with you to make sure you find a way to, um, you know, to, to, to afford it or figure it out. Okay, so I'm not going to go back into the plan tool, but over the weekend, uh, practice your planning tool. Try to plan for next week. Remember how, you know, and this is in yesterday's session, you know, you start by blocking out your structures, activities, and then you find, you locate those writing windows uh, here are marked in red, right? And then you try to make specific, uh, you know, plans for, for that. Uh, but 
you know, I just want to go back to um, the follow-up question for the scheduling tool, right? So once you've done the scheduling tool and then you go through a week where you try to actually follow your schedule and every day I recommend when you start, you know, when you're first uh, dealing, you know, when you're first training yourself to, to uh, work with that schedule, uh, you can kind of at the end of the day, write what really happened and maybe, you know, change the plan and accordingly. As you work with this, during the week, observe. Did you discover something you did not realize? Meaning, are you under or overestimating the time you actually spend on different aspects of your home life or your work life? So again, what I'm trying to tell you, this is a cognitive, uh, uh, behavioral cognitive tool, and it has a little bit of a trick inside. And the trick is that most of us, when we plan ahead, we are, we plan over, you know, we're overly ambitious. And so, or, so it's two things. We are too ambitious about how much time we will have for work. And we are in delusion about the, uh, the you know, how much time we actually do need to spend on our lives, on resting, on recharging, on family, on friends, on chores, on service, on these other things. So the tool is not a way to fix and force and be rigid and be like, I'm going to plan this and then I'm going to do it. It's definitely long-term a way to get you to do your commitments for sure, but in a more self-compassionate way, right? So the idea is play with the tool, schedule, and then go back. It's like rinse, repeat. You go back, you look at what really happened, and you can become more mindful and realistic about the actual time you have to write. And here's the silver lining with this. When you do understand the time that is there for you to actually write, when that time comes, you can set up your calendar and mark it and treat it just like a, you know, like a class you have to teach or any other activity that's, that's a set block activity, but you are still flexible on when you schedule it. But you do know, look, this is a writing window. And let, let me give you this mantra for boundaries. You can tell people, you can tell yourself and other people this, I am sorry, I'm due at the page. So let's repeat this. I am sorry. I know you want me to do this, this, or that, but I'm due at the page, right? So I don't want you guys to take from this week that I'm like, never force, like, I don't want you to force yourself, but it doesn't mean that never forcing yourself means you don't do the work. Mm -mm. You do the work by replacing discipline with commitment. So you, you are now committed and therefore you don't have to force yourself. Does that make sense? Is this resonating? If so, you know, again, in the comments, in the chat, I'm, I'm happy to hear. I see people are saying that this was helpful. I'm very glad with it, this, it was. Um, I wanted to do a little bit more about clarity, but I think this is going to have to wait for next time. Let me see for a second here. All right. Uh, I, I don't know if this is somebody asking to go or uh, come in or go. So uh, from the workbook, I want you to highlight this one. Uh, complete this contemplation. As a writer, and this is not for right now, this is homework, right? I am slow, fast, slower than other people, faster than other people. And that makes me feel. So a lot of the time we have stories around time where we compare ourselves to other people. So uh, next time we will do a little bit more about uh, this one, about gaining clarity and about publishing. Um, gaining clarity is a very important part of learning how to have a writing practice that is self-compassionate, but also, you know, uh, would lead you to actually fulfill your goals. So all of this and more on Monday. Let me know if you are interested in taking the workshop. It's going to be fantastic. I already have people, you know, it's, 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 it's happening. Uh, it's going to be a seven weeks. We're starting February uh, 4th, but we're getting the first, you know, you're getting all the materials uh, January uh, um, January 31st is when you get the materials for the first week. Uh, I'm going to probably just do a little video on that uh, separately on the group. Uh, I wanted to also show you, you when you take the workshop, what you get, you are a part of a private secret uh, Facebook group that has guides. Everything is organized on that. Every week you get a pre-recorded lesson from me um, and about, you know, um, the, the, the topic of the week. And, and then you get readings. 
and then you get writing exercises. And Friday, we workshop it together. It's a small group setting. I don't think we have, you know, usually I cap it at 25. If there's more, you know, if it becomes really big, I just, I'll just chop it up to smaller groups or I will do breakout sessions because it's part of the thing is that we, you know, create accountability uh, groups and it becomes a really important part of the work is how we support each other. Um, we also do, you know, it, it's encouraged if people feel that they are benefiting from co-writing, you know, if they want to schedule together certain times to come on the group, come on the Zoom and even like mute the Zoom and write together. And that's so that's part of what happens uh, as we have the group um, in the Facebook uh, group, you know, every you 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 have that forever, like the access to the materials is forever. And people, I see the people in the groups, they keep going back and they go back to the readings and they replay the lessons. And, you know, it's it's a really valuable, I know it can sound like a lot of money. I think we, the even the early bird special, I think is like, what is it, 457? And this is with fees. You can get it for 450s. If you talk to me about fee-free ways to sign up, but you get forever access to a really, if I may say so myself, freaking fantastic program that is always there for you to go back to whenever you need to go back and rewire your writing life so that it is cultivating and supporting and self-compassionate. And also once you, you know, you know this, you can see a lot of my former students are coming in once in the workshop you know, once work, once you work with me, you are forever in the loop and I keep you posted and I'm always excessive. I'm texting with people all day long. Okay, questions. Anna is asking, uh, could you say a little bit about how the workshop concept in individual coaching works for people who do not only write in English, but also in other languages for academic publication? Um, I'll, I will tell you this, Anna, I've never had a group uh, where I only had people who speak English. I myself am a second language, you know, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm my, my natural, my mother tongue is Hebrew. Uh, I always have a really big group, especially, you know, the process work is not language. It's not limited in any way, shape or form to English, but I will, I, it, we, we work on the writing process, right? We, we, we teach ourselves how to um, um, build a writing practice that's going to be helpful. So it's not at all language specific. I will say that a lot of people still have to publish in English, even if, you know, academically, even if, if they're in different countries. Um, I can't offer to read your work if it's written in a different language, except for Hebrew and English. Um, those are the only ones I'm proficient with. Um, that kind of happens more in advanced workshop anyway, where we do a lot of reading. But even then, you can come up the way I invite people to share with each other, because we, I never ask people to read somebody's whole book or whole dissertation, right? So when we do feedback, we usually have people write something condensed and shorter. And I kind of work with you to give you a formula uh, that's really helpful for you actually to gain clarity about your work, you know? And so, you know, if we need to read and give feedback, and sometimes what people do is they come up on the group and instead of letting us read their work, we invite them to just share and, you know, orally to just tell us what the work is. And then we give the feedback. So there are a lot of ways to work around. I hope I'm, um, um, I'm, I'm answering the question. Any other questions about the workshop? Yes. Okay, good. Um, oh, and I see you said you just signed up. So yay. Okay. So <laughs> welcome. <laughs> I'm, I'm delighted to hear that. So Everybody, you're more than welcome to, uh, if you have, if you need to chat with me one-on-one -on -one also about uh, any questions about the workshop or anything else, we are not, oh, by the way, people are asking me about joining the advanced workshop. It's not uh, enrolling yet. That would probably enroll sometime in late February, early March, and we will be doing April and May for advanced workshop. And if there's, depending on um, when or not people want to do one over the summer, I might be able to do one in July. I might also do the accelerated uh, foundational workshop in July. But right now, what you're invited to see if it works for you this semester, this winter, spring semester, uh, we have a seven week foundational workshop. It's 
is a deep dive into uh, the kind of stuff we did this week, looking at your writer's block, resolving your writer's block, uh, teaching you a lot of really practical tools to detoxify your writing life. These tools work. I tell you, I'm seeing this and a lot of you are here know that they, you know, they work, but it requires, you know, the reason to take a deep, deeper uh, dive in a workshop is that it doesn't work overnight. And if you can work with a group of people who are all have the clarity that they have the goal to change their approach to writing, the power of the group is fantastic. And people really, you know, discover what the, um, you know, what, what's, what's underlying, you know, what's the underlying anxiety or fears. We do a lot of work to kind of look at our fear and, and, and grow out of our fear and all of these things, right? So this is the first part of the workshop is the, the, the unblocking part. And then a big part of that is looking at time and we start, you know, we practice time. But the second half, we really dive into your actual, you know, the writing. We, we talk about the academic writing style. We hack the structure of, you know, your project. Right now, the project you're working, you bring it into the workshop. We uh, learn tricks and hacks um, from the world of, you know, uh, literary writing and uh, memoir writing, all that. we're bringing that into the world of academia because there is a world of information out there that can really help you gain control of your writing project, understand your topic, understand what you're asking about your topic, and then understand what actions you're taking to answer the questions about your topic. And this little hack I just mentioned, and you know, it, it sounds, uh, simple but it's very clever actually when you are able to answer those questions what are you know what is my topic what am i asking about it and what action am i taking to answer my questions about my topic then you have the moving parts of your entire project and we get you really clear about that and off to the races and you write and then you know there's always an opportunity by the way when you take the accelerated i'm oh, sorry the foundational uh uh at at the end of everybody that graduates from the uh workshop is offered an opportunity to work with me one-on-one -on -one in, in reduced rate. And by the way, the advanced also, uh, the advanced workshop that we're, we will have later in the spring uh, includes a lot more one-on-one -on -one time with me. So you take the foundational, you get a hang and uh, you, know, you get clarity and you start working towards changing your writing life. It, culminates with uh, the, the weeks, the, the last four weeks, we talk about style and craft and we practice a lot of actual writing. Um, and then you can, you know, continue to work with me in, in many different ways. So you're very much invited uh, to, you know, to, to join us. And if you can join us right now, that's fine. I'll be giving those, you know, again, but send me your friends and Send me your masses, your blocked academic friends. I am cannot wait to hear more about you, your work, and um, you know, let me know if you have questions. All right, I'm gonna end the Facebook portion. If you have questions, you want to talk one on one, and you can jump on the Zoom again. And if you're on the Zoom right now, feel free to stay here to chat a little bit more. Shabbat shalom. Have a great weekend. Don't forget to join us Monday for our bonus lesson, and don't forget to let me know in the group. If you have something you want me to talk about, we will be talking about publishing and style or, you know, the actual writing of academic work. Meanwhile, thank you so much for joining us for this incredible week of, uh, you know, our free challenge. It was really inspiring. I feel both recharged, recharged and ready to take a couple of days of complete rest <laughs> with my family. And so should you. I really... You know, my yoga teacher would always say, "My light in my the light in me bows to the light in you." I really feel that now because I usually I'm one of these people who be like, "Okay," but I do feel that because um, I do know that those of you and it was a big group that stayed with this. You guys were doing something difficult. It's it's a lot. So fill out the workbook. Monday morning is the time to send it for me to get, a, you know, uh, either 30 minutes of one-on-one -on -one, uh, laser focus coaching with me on your project or uh, a discount 
uh, on the workshop if you want to join the workshop. And with that said, have a great week and see you Monday, I think 9.30 in the morning. We might do uh, another one in the afternoon next week. Bye-bye, friends.